Can sure. I taste your juice? Uh, hey, folks, P. Bissardo. So um, this was originally supposed to be my video. This was supposed to be my video doing the kind of the, the Greek recap, the, the bromance tour recap. But then I, I thought to myself, I said, self, uh, there is no way, there's no way that I'm going to be able to recap this properly without my good pal, my dear friend, my brother from another mother, uh, Dimitri, without having Dimitri present. You see, because, um, first of all, I would never remember uh, everybody's names. Probably wouldn't remember uh, the names of the vape shops. I mean, I can't even get Dimitri's vape shop, right? How am I supposed to remember the names of other vape shops? I would probably forget a whole bunch of stuff. So I've decided to do this video like this. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be in uh, breathtaking, high definition. Uh, we're, you're just going to have to deal with this. So this is going to really be interesting. First of all, we're both sick, okay? I've got my halls. I got my halls right here. Uh, Dimitri, do you have do you have medication? I do. I have uh, your your favorite <laughs> from oh, Greece, <laughs> the nose I really, I opener. I really don't like that. I really don't like that stuff. But it, it works. works. It, it works. Really well. It really does. I just finished a cup of tea and uh, been having chicken soup for lunch. And uh, yeah, you gave me whatever you had in Greece. I don't know where. I don't know. Where, I think it's just because you worked me too hard. That doesn't sound. I, good. I I did. I did. I did. But to be fair, you're working me very hard because the only reason why you have me on this video is because you can't remember anybody's name. <laughs> That's the only reason you have me on this video. But it's kinda, okay. Kinda, it's okay. I do have is. to. I do have to tell your viewers that you were a trooper and we did have a lot of work in Greece. And you did get sick the last couple of days, but man, you toughed it out. We went, got medicine, and uh, and you weren't feeling very well, but you, you you smiled, you talked to a lot of people, and everybody appreciated you being there. So we're you gonna know, give, I, you I the, the, gotta give you props. I thought that the entire trip was uh, really really good, and we're gonna go through in this video uh, pretty much everything that we did. Uh, this is gonna be kind of a unique video because Dimitri and I have never done anything like this where uh, we're not live. I mean, this looks like we're live right now, but we're actually not live. He's recording. Dear God, I hope he's recording this video uh, to his hard drive. And then what he's going to do is he's going to send the video to me. And then I'm going to put some of the media and photos on top of this video. That is the plan anyway. Correct? <laughs> that's, that's a very, very healthy plan <laughs> that you have there, buddy. I hope we can come through with it. Yeah, um, but 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 uh, for for people that that are watching this video, I think uh, since this was kind of a vape romance tour, uh, along with uh, you know promoting in again and attending the vape expo show, which was the first one in Greece. It's happened a couple of times in the past, but this was the first one that was really organized in a big location. Uh, so it was important for me, obviously, to be there and and the success of our products in Europe uh, for us representing in again to be there. But it was also an opportunity. Uh, for for Phil to see what I saw a couple months ago when I was there, and you know, going into vape shops and talking to our partners there, and 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 the vape shop owners, and most importantly, their customers, seeing people use our products uh, in in store was, I mean, it, it really is humbling, uh, and we were very very happy to do it, and and just get real time feedback. I think that's really really important as as we continue on this journey. It, it was, you know, I, I, we ha I haven't seen it th that much here, you know, in the States. And I think, um, you know, a lot of people here maybe direct lung or maybe they're starting to come back to, to mouth to lung. But um, to, to go to Greece and to see all the people come up to us using our products at the show, uh, at the stores, at the, you know, the, the individual vape shops. Uh, there was that one vape shop, I would say nine out of 10 people who walked in there were using a the Zenith. They love I mean, the Zenith, man. I love it. It feels so good. Uh, especially when a new vapor goes into that shop and um, is is looking for uh, an, an easy alternative um, and something that that's that's going to satisfy them and the, the the vape shop the people there are instantly recommending you know devices like the Zenith I mean that that makes you feel incredible it does right? and and not to make it sound like a commercial but one of the things that we heard from all the shop owners was especially on the Zenith tank is that as a as a smoker or somebody that comes in to convert or somebody that might have had issues with some of their previous equipment the thing they like about the zenith is that it's easy right which is exactly the reason why we designed it the way that we did and mm -hmm. second of all they can give it to them and not have to worry about what that customer is going to do when they're on their own right because when right, you leave right. the vape shop now you're on your own you got a tank you got liquid you got a device and that what they have seen is that it has cut down a lot on the user error, right? So that's that was very humbling, and it, and it was I, I really enjoyed seeing that. And uh, 
and and I'm happy that we're continuing to put out products under that same type of uh you know format under the platform series. For sure, for sure. So should we start walking through this trip? Yes, let's do it. Let's let's All get right. started. So on uh, nine hours, nine now um usually Dimitri uses his um his his airline powers, his skills to get us upgraded. And I've and, done it. Uh, and I've done it in the past many times. You've done it in the past many times. But it starts with us um, just in regular seats in the back of the uh, the plane with the chickens yes. and the goats. Yes. And um, with Dimitri this close to me <laughs> for what, what was that? It's like a nine, nine and a half hour nine flight. Nine and right? a half hours from Philadelphia direct to Athens. Yes. Right. So not, and we'll talk about the flight coming back, too, because I got some <laughs> words for you on that on that flight. But anyway, uh, nine and a half hours. And, and then there we are in Greece. And what's the first thing we do, Dimitri, when we get there? Go ahead. Let's go to work. Right. <laughs> so we'll right. Go straight I mean, to the much store. That was it. <laughs> That's it. That's um, it. And we get picked up. We get picked up in the car. Yes. I, I got a new car in Greece. I didn't yeah. actually get to drive it this summer because I had ordered it. It took two months for it to get there. Right. So Grigori picked it up. My friend uh, and, and business partner in Greece picked up the car, and he came and picked up uh, picked us up from the airport in the new right. car. And you've decided – you've decided – because – now a lot of the a lot of the vehicles in Greece they're very very small. Yeah. Okay. I mean I've never seen so many smart cars in my entire life, right? Um, because there's there's not a whole lot of parking and you got to get wiggle your tiny little car into your spot. So sure. you decided on a Yaris. Can you sure, a Yaris. can you can you, t- can you talk to me a little bit about the uh, the decision process uh, in buying such a vehicle? Well, a lot of people might not know this, but there's a couple of factors that I had to take under consideration before I chose the car. Uh, number one in Greece, gas is very expensive, almost seven dollars per gallon, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of the cars are smaller, fourteen hundred cc engines or below. So that was one consideration: the gas price. Number two, uh, taxes. You know, uh, in Greece, cars are taxed based on the displacement of the engine. So the bigger the car that you get, the more taxes you're going to pay. Yes. Uh, and uh, and uh, number three, uh, I wanted to get something that's good and reliable, automatic, because my wife can't drive stick. Uh, so after I did some researching, Toyota is a very good brand, very reliable brand. It had everything that I wanted, you know, the air conditioners that are automatic and all that. And it's a hybrid, which means that it runs on gas, but on lower, um, speeds, it runs on battery that it charges by itself. So it's a very, very economical car for the city. And that's how I came into the determination of buying the Toyota Yaris. That's very interesting. Uh, all very, very interesting. Now, uh, I, the, the thing that uh, kind of I'm curious about is the taxing. You get taxed on uh, based on the CCs of the engine. Is that correct? That's correct. Is, does the taxing work at all towards like the number of windshield wipers that you have? <laughs> it, it does not. It does not. Because I noticed the, the Yaris only has one windshield <laughs> it, wiper for all of us. It only does have I didn't know that actually until we had to use it <laughs> when we yeah. got into some rain. I did not check when I was doing car research if i had one or two windshields right okay now the other thing i don't know if you notice this too but the taxing taxation does it have anything to do with automatic uh windows power windows up and down because i don't know if you notice this because you probably haven't spent a whole lot of time in the back seat but Correct. the back seat actually has the manual crank um windshields uh windows right now, do you save any tax money on, on that feature? I, I am wanna... not sure, but to be fair, I'm never going to sit in the back seat. So all that matters is that the front has power windows, and that's all, all right. that matters. Now, the, the Yaris gets about what? I don't know, 105 miles to the gallon, something like that. Depends you know, who's what... driving. It depends right. who's driving. Yeah. And and the way you drive it, it got around three miles to the gallon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know did. if people know that, but is it safe? Is it safe to drive a Yaris? At a hundred, we're a hundred and sixty. We topped one hundred and sixty kilometers per hour, which is not that fast. I mean, it's almost ninety-five miles per hour, so it's not that fast. You know, I mean, it's not like we were in a Porsche in Germany. You know, well, yeah, but, but in a Yaris, it feels like about <laughs> three hundred miles per hour. Per it does. Hour. It really I, does. But again, I did some research on this because you did bring it up, and it is yes. absolutely safe under good conditions, good roads, good tires. It's actually safe to do 160 miles an hour. In fact, in fact, they say you can do a little bit higher than that, which we're going to test out in our next trip. No, no, we won't be doing that. <laughs> we won't be doing that. And I don't know. For, you know for, I want folks to know that my ass actually still hurts. And before before you insert joke there, it's from driving around in the yards with my ass cheeks clinched up so tight because I feel uh, I felt like I was going to die at any moment. I thought it was something else. But yeah, well that's why I said insert joke there, right? Once you know? again, once yes. again to be fair, would, I've driven you out. I've driven you all over the planet. I've driven you, you in Canada, I've driven you in France, I've driven you yeah. I mean everywhere I've driven you you've always been safe and that's all that matters. 
I always get you there. I always get our national treasure home safe. And I am. I'm safe. Here I am back in Florida and completely safe. That's all that matters. So thank you. Thank you for taking really, really good care of me over there in Greece. Um, now, the first the first night we were there, are we even allowed to talk about this group? Because I feel like if I discuss this group, I'm going to get shot or something like that. You have but, to be you have to be a little bit uh, sensitive in the way that you present the Yafka. All right. Yafka. It's a Yafka yeah. group. It's a very now, hey, hold on. Is it Yaf- Yafka? Yeah, or because uh, there is no letter gamma in the English language. So you use yes. G. It's like the hero. Hero, they spell ah. it with a G. It's exactly so like the same. Yafka. Yafka, right. So I've been mispronouncing it this entire time. It's okay. It's Yafka. been fun. It's okay. It's okay. been fun. Okay. Uh, See, that's, that's exactly why I need you to be part of this right, video. Right. Dimitri, right. So okay. they, they, we had the first night, I mean, literally jet lagged. Um, the, the guys were kind enough to invite us. And the Yafka is a very prestigious, small vapor club. Uh, it's just some guys from a Facebook group and gals that got together. And um, you, you know, what really impressed me the first time that I got invited to their meeting was it's just them coming together and having a dinner, having some drinks, vaping. And just hanging out as friends, you know, I mean, it's something that we did in our vaping community back in 2011 and 2012 with the vapor uh, cons and the vape bashes. It's kind of like that in a very, very small scale. And it's a yeah. very exclusive club. And the reason why they want to keep it that exclusive is because of drama. Unfortunately, vaping in 2018 involves some form of drama daily, daily, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook groups, whether it's friends, business, business associates. I mean, it's just drama field reviewers, reviewers. So they keep it, <laughs> they keep it very, very exclusive. And, uh, I had such a great time with them. It's just like, I could vape and, and say whatever I wanted. I didn't have to throttle myself. They're very passionate about vaping. They're very passionate about conversions. Uh, you know, two of the guys from this group were at our first event and one of them won a chroma kit and the other one won a Zenith tank. Both of them passed them on to smokers. I mean, it's this is the kind of people that they are. So I've been in their meeting twice and this was the third time. And of course, you know, I cannot publicly say what you had to go through the initiation for you to be part of it. Now, we'll leave that for maybe an X-rated version. Uh, but you were invited and you did pass the initiation and you were welcome into the Yafka dinner club. And it was it was it was a great time. I thought it was an amazing time. Probably one of the best nights that we had there. Those guys were fantastic. I, I, I absolutely enjoyed myself. The, the meal was great. And by the way, like one of the first things that came across my plate. Uh, what is the name of that? It's uh, organ meat wrapped up in intestines. What's, right. what's that called? It's Cocorezzi. Cocorezzi. And here's your and, experience. Um, the, so, and the, I have a little video. So we'll go ahead and play the video. First of all, you got to know how to just get you some. What are you doing? Get you like five plates some. of it. Get you more. Oh, well, I don't know how much. It, just grab that whole thing. Right. There you go. Well, you have to get the whole experience because right. it's like a. Ver- right. It's like okay. a. Right. So this. You know, hold on. This is a. Uh, Cocorezzi. 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 Yeah. And you're not going to tell me what it is before I eat no. it, though, right? No. You want me to eat it? Yeah, just eat it. Okay. It's delicious. Good. What do you think it is? Oh, my God. Don't tell him. Do you like <laughs> some kind of organ? <laughs> what, which, which organ? Liver? Liver and more? Yeah. Heart? <laughs> it's all the intestines. All the intestines? All of them. The whole thing. They clean it, they clean the intestines out very good. Yes. Yep. Yes. So, you know, Dimitri, just try it. And, you know, I'm an adventurous eater, right? So yeah. I'm going to try yeah. anything. And I try it. And it's, it's good. It's, it really it's is. Absolutely, it was really, really good. So good that I, I went in for seconds, yeah. right? Yeah, it's so, actually um, the part, the or different organs from the lamb, and uh, and then they wrap it with the intestine. I mean, everything's cleaned out. I mean, and then they cook it over charcoal, and just the way that they prepare the food and all that. And it's kind of funny because sometimes we go to China and we, you know, we see some of the foods there, and people are like, "Oh my God, how do you eat that?" Every country has their own, you know, little uh, thing. And uh, and um, what I found really really interesting is that everything that you tried in Greece, whether it was weird or not weird. You enjoyed because the flavor and the taste of it and the freshness of it overtakes everything of if I tell you that it's intestines or not. Yeah, and absolutely. Now, what's the name of that plate again? Cocorezzi. Cocorezzi. Now, if given the opportunity, if given the choice between the Cocorezzi or 
some gyro and kebab. I'm probably going to go with the gyro and sure. kebab, right? Sure. But it was sure. still very, very good. Sure. So, I mean, that's how that meal starts off. But the, the one thing that I noticed, and I even said it at the table, it was so cool that not never, never once were we discussing what kind of wires we're using or how many wraps we have or what the resistance of our atomizers were. It was just a really good conversation about stuff other than vaping. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you can see it's a mix of people. There's, I mean, MTL in Europe in general is predominant and in Greece as well, too. And I think it's one of the reasons why people, I, I'm not going to say love us more, but I think that they can relate to us more and we're yeah. more approachable to have a discussion. Not that we have anything against somebody that cloud chases, but when we're talking about having discussions, we're just on a different level. Right. So um, so it was nice to sit down, but you saw there's, there's people that sub own, there's people that MTL, uh, and the discussion was was gathered around non-vaping stuff, but also when it came to vaping stuff about, again, how do we approach more smokers? How do we promote vaping? Some of the mistakes yeah. that the industry has done as well, too. Um, and, and one thing that you noticed, and it started off like that, and I think the eventual trip is, <coughs> pardon me, <laughs> you got me sick, um, is uh, that all the food is served family style, right? I mean, it, yeah. they just bring the platters there. It had lamb chops. It had tzatziki sauce. It had uh, the the cocoretti. It had the potatoes. It had everything. And you just you just go to town and just just eat. Yeah, it's just it was. It's great. It was, you feel more of a family atmosphere than anything else. Yeah, and you know, family is a good word to use uh, for the Greek trip because uh, I, I felt like I was part of the family, uh, whether at the Yakfa, Yakfa, Yafka, Yafka. See, do I need you? Yafka. Say schnitzel. Schnitzel. Good. Okay. Whether at that dinner or, um, you know, whether at the show or whether at the different shops, uh, I really felt like I was part of the family. Right. And, and I can't thank yeah. uh, the people that I ran into enough uh, for that feeling. So anyway, so that was night one. Right. The, the next day was set up, went to the expo and uh, and uh, we took some stuff there from the shop. And um, uh, we uh, we kind of well, we didn't really assist, but we were kind of there overseeing the process of setting up the booth. Um, it, it was held at uh, a, a stadium that generally does karate and zuzitsu uh, type of events. Um, so it was a nice. It was a nice. I believe it was the Taekwondo yeah, Olympic taekwondo. Stadium. <laughs> it's, it's, it's taekwondo. Very, good. very Greek sounding, by the way. The Taekwondo <laughs> Olympic correct. Stadium. That's yeah. correct. That's where they had the Olympics. That's where they had those events. So that's how the name kind of got stuck. But um, you know, it was a little bit warm. I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit warm. Uh, but uh, you know, overall, you know, for a first big type event, uh, it was uh, it was for, for me it was sufficient. All right. So we're we're going into the event now. So it, we had set up, and the next day was the event. Um, what did, so overall, what did you think of the event? What were the, the positives? What were the negatives? Uh, I think that for me, as as in most events, and this one a little bit more because it is my home country and getting to see people that you talk online and meet them first time in person and um, just mingle and, and hug. And dis I mean, like all events, that is the most, I think that's the most important part. But also, it's the one thing that I enjoy the most. Um, the event had a lot of uh, a, a lot of attendance. Uh, I had a lot of uh, exhibitors. Um, liquid, you know. I mean, th that's something that we've come to expect to all the shows. I think uh, I think Inakin and maybe one more company were the only hardware Chinese manufacturers there. Uh, and you know, a few of the modders uh, from Greece. Um, uh, none of the big names. I was a little bit surprised not to see you know the the Ismu Guru and the Golden Greeks and all that and that support their uh, their local event, but um, yeah, I was I was actually going to jump in there and say that uh, I, I was very very surprised because we know that um, Greece is hometown to a lot of the um, the very very popular modders. Um, Mod Addy uh, was at uh, actually set up some devices at your booth, right? Yeah, and 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 uh, Thanasi that makes Mod Addy is a very very good friend of mine, and I told him I said your your products always need to be on display. I mean, there's some of this. I think Mod Addy is one of the smaller ones in Greece, so. You know, maybe, you know, he didn't want to spend all the money to get a big booth. So we offered him some space in our booth. I don't think there's, a, you know, I think it's great. He's a very, very good friend. And uh, and I think people enjoyed seeing him there. But it's a little bit disappointing not to see some of the bigger names in Greece uh, yeah. as far as the modding is concerned. The event I, itself had some issues. You know, they were like an hour late to open up the doors. A lot of people outside getting upset. 
Uh, it did rain the first day on Saturday, so that kind of deterred the attendance. So that really kind of made up for it on Sunday. Uh, you know, a couple of things that I didn't like, the loud music. You know, I, maybe I'm just, maybe we're just getting too old, Phil. I don't know. Hey, Dimitri, can you re- can you just just try to remember a little bit that this is my video, so I, I need to talk a little sure, bit in it, sure. okay? Well, you yeah. asked me, so I'm trying to answer. No, no I know, I know. <laughs> so I, I was going to talk about, you know, some of the positives and the negatives as well. And the, uh, the, the positives are all the things that you mentioned, you know, meeting folks, having people come up to me uh, and, and the both of us and saying, you know, uh, you, you know, you taught me how to vape. You taught me things about vaping that I didn't know, or more importantly, you know, through some of your influence, uh, I, I don't smoke anymore. I mean, you know, how yeah, cool is that? Cool. Um, you know, walking around, met a lot of really, really nice people there. The negatives that I would say, one, even though the event was big, it felt walled off. It yeah. felt very claustrophobic. Um, and I think that had a lot to do with the um, the vendor that was in the center with the really, really high walls yeah. and just some of the high walls in general. Because I went up top and I took some photos of the event from the uh, the, the balcony. I guess you could call it the balcony or the mm-hmm. second floor. Uh, and you can see how big the event is. But when you were down on the floor, it didn't feel that big. Yeah, I think that was I think that was kind of maybe bad planning on on that vendor in the middle. I think it was replaced smoke. I don't think they necessarily wanted to. Uh, flex their muscle, but I think it was just room management error um, because they did have a wall that was around. They had they were the main sponsor, obviously, but they had a wall around their entire booth, and you know they wanted to keep their brands in the center and all that. I get it because they had they bring you know various brands. They're a big distributor, but what it actually resulted in doing, and I think a lot of the the attendants uh, were disappointed as well too. You couldn't see across. Like I, mm-hmm. if you asked me, I wanted to see where Blazy Liquids were, or Flavorist, or one of these companies. I couldn't see across from it because it was all blocked in the middle. And um, and and you know, I mean, the music that 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 was a big turnoff for me. I, and again, I'm I'm seeing it a little bit from a business perspective, but I'm also seeing it from I want to have a conversation with somebody. I, especially the first day, I could not get I cannot hear it. I lost both of us lost our voice by the time the event was over. Yeah, and, you know, I, I agree with you. And maybe not so much would I agree with you if it was a public event, if it was a business to consumer event. But really, it wasn't, right? I mean, it, it now, although a lot of consumers were in, and I want you to right. explain a little bit more about sure. that, but really, this was supposed to be a business to business event. And, and I think there needs to be a certain level of professionalism when you are doing a business to business event, especially since you know, you want to do business, right? You want to do business and you want to make deals and you want to, you want to, you know, make closures. So um, how did all that go down? Yeah. By law, you cannot have a B2C event in Greece, right? So they're B2B events and they're kind of disguised by giving uh, invitations from the businesses that they work with to consumers to come in. So you can only come in by invitation uh, it's it's kind of like what's happening in Vape Expo in Las Vegas. It's a B two B, but influencers will be, you know, or media or, or or YouTube or stuff like that. Consumers will be invited by invitation. You need to have a special invitation to get in. So that's how that kind of came about. But I see it as a B two B event, and as a B two B event, and doing business there for my business in Greece, I I was a little bit disappointed in that. You know, I get that the culture of vaping needs to be there, but. When you're overtaking the mic with cloud competitions and seven DJs playing different types of music constantly all at the same time, it made it very, very hard to sit down and have any kind of discussion, whether it was business or just even just friendly related. So that was a little bit disappointing. And, you know, I think that the the management of the hall could have been done better. Again, this was, you know, one of the biggest, I guess, the biggest show that they've done in Greece. So hopefully they'll learn from the mistakes and then kind of come back and and do it even better and bigger next year. By the way, I do want to I do want to say one of the positive things that I you know, I mean, there was a lot of moments during the show that that I saw you talking with the Greek vapors and 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 I could generally tell that that you were enjoying um, not only the interaction, but you were enjoying the fact that people, even after all these years, will come up to you and even just say, yeah, you know, I, I started watching your videos five years ago and it made me quit smoking. A couple of things that stood out in my mind. One, you know, if you bring this picture up now, this young lady that you rebuilt her Aries uh, that was there with her husband, they were just so sweet, just so nice people. And she was just delighted and, and just just so happy that you built her Aries. And and she tells her husband now she's never going to get rid of that build. You know, it's just it's, it's just little <laughs> stuff like that that I find that 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 really impressed me 
I mean, you know, as a friend, I know, I, I get it because I see you like this all the time. But for people that don't know it, it's just I think that was just just really really nice of you. That's terrific. That's terrific. Um, and it was really good meeting and talking with them as well. <clears throat> but um, so you did a build at a, uh, at a at a vape shop. Do you remember what shop that was? I think uh, it was it, vape store in Halkida. Vape store in Halkida. Are you sure it was vape store? Yes. I'm positive. Yeah, I think it was vape store. And um, something happened happened uh, during that build. Now, I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> it did happen? Um, I, I recorded, and we actually went live uh, during that 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 build. And yeah. and something ha- what what exactly happened uh, during that build, Dimitri? Well, I do have to uh, preface this by yeah. saying that this was like on the spot, right? The guy uh, came in, got an Aries, and yeah. I was sitting right there, and he yeah. said, "Why don't you build it for me since you're here?" And you know, of course, I didn't want to use the pre-made coils that came in, and so he'll have a couple of spares. So I said, "I'll build you one right now." And 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 I did it standing up on the spot on the counter with not my tools. They were just giving me tools back and forth. So it was a little bit. There's a lot of confusion. And I have two cameras. I got a camera up front. He's going live on on his Facebook. You're behind me with another camera. Just the pressure was too much, too much. But what resulted in uh, that was I was cutting the cotton. I cut my finger <laughs> with, with, with the scissors. Yeah. yeah, I literally bled all over this guy's atomizer. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it makes it better, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, of course. And uh, I have a couple a little uh, aftermath videos. So let, let's see those right now. I feel terrible, man. I put a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> You're a little boob over here. I was nothing on this. Like, I'm oh, really, yeah. oh, my God. I'm it's... losing so much blood right now. I'm trying to get wheezy right now. Tell you. Like, me. Sh- I, you know, here, let me get you some orange juice. <laughs> I bet you he's going to cut his finger. I bet you he's going to be just fine. And he won't look. Go ahead. Just because he's better looking than me doesn't mean he can build better than me. I, I, I think he's going to say. I think he's well. I guarantee he's not going to cut his finger. If you take that camera off of me, I probably build even better. Look at that. See, look, look at that. What a great build. Look at that. Uh, Beautiful glowing. glowing. And let me see your fingers. It glows like all the front front cuts. Front. Now, everything's fine, right? Yeah. This is from a different job. Ah, okay. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna, we're going to get back to those those shops. But uh, nice work there, Dimitri. Now, did you get any blood? In the atomizer, is there any like? Is there any chance of them vaping your DNA? There is a slice. There is the slightest possibility that there might be some blood DNA in his atomizer. God, good lord, I feel so bad. But he'll, he'll vape it off. Don't worry, <laughs> he'll yeah. vape it off. So we're gonna get we're gonna get back to this. But uh, look what I got finally. Oh, look at that, the Orion. That, huh? Yeah, cool. I think this will be my next review. Uh, any any last minute, any last things that we want to talk about or discuss with the uh, the show? Yeah, I mean, overall, in closing thoughts for the show, uh, the the weather kind of deterred attendance on Saturday, and you know the music was a little bit loud. I think we made those comments to the organizers. Day two, the weather was much nicer. Uh, I think it was double the attendance on Sunday. Um, the the music was a little bit more controlled. Uh, I think there was a little bit more of a volume limit on Sunday than it was on Saturday. And business wise, I mean, for us, uh, it, it was it was a successful show. A lot of people got to see our products. They got to see sneak peeks on a couple of things that are coming out. And uh, and, you know, we we talked to a lot of wholesale customers. And, and I think overall, as far as business wise is concerned, uh, whether it's Inakin or Liquid Puff, uh, we, we were very happy with it. Right. And, and just to, to clarify, the, the, the booth or the area that we had, uh, one side of it was Inakin. Right. right. And we had uh, Jay and Kathy there from Inakin. We'll talk about them in a little bit. And the other side was your shop, of course, Liquid Smoke. Right. <laughs> yeah. Liquid Smoke. Exactly right. <laughs> And uh, speaking of uh, liquid smoke, aka liquid puff, should I just keep calling it liquid smoke, or should we? Um, I'm, 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 I'm just going to have to open up another store called Liquid Smoke now. It's getting a lot of popular. You might have to. You might have to. Um, Johnny and Steos. Okay, Steos is at the uh, the original uh, one, right? And correct. Johnny is at the new one. And Halandri, and then Johnny uh, is at the one in Athens, correct? Yeah. Okay, and uh, of course they came with us, uh, and they manned the booth at uh, Vape Expo as well. Uh, two fantastic guys, man. Really, really nice yeah. guys. Uh, you should be happy to have them working for you. And uh, if you are interested in quitting smoking, uh, go see either Johnny or Steos over there at the Liquid Puff locations. Uh, they're really going to be able to help you out. And, and you know, it's it's funny that you say that because, um, you know, when we were on the stage, you know, they, they gave us 15 minutes to go up on stage and, and do a little giveaway and stuff like that. And we give some, you know, we don't give product. All right. This is one of the things that I do want to mention is like when we go to these shows, we try to protect our retailers. 
So we try not to give away liquids and stuff like that because you want the retail shops to maintain, you know, we, we need vape shops. They're the bloodline of this industry. But when they gave us the opportunity to go up on stage, we had a bunch of shirts and hats and stuff like that to give away. And uh, and it was fun. We got up there. We did a little dolphin trick and, and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden I hear you say, uh, come visit us at Liquid Smoke. And then my knees just kind of buckled. <laughs> down. I was like, oh, my God, did you just call my shop Liquid Liquid Smoke? Uh, but yeah, it's liquid puff and, and mostly for us in liquid puff, uh, not so much as retail, it's more about wholesale distribution. You know, we bring some American liquids in, we have our vape romance line distributed through there. And, and of course the Anakin products. Yeah. And, and the correct name of the shop is liquid puff, liquid puff, right? I think it's a good, well, name. which is kind of funny because the last shop that we were at, which we we're going to talk about was. Dr. Anti Smoke, yes. correct? And then you, and you were calling that Dr. Anti Vape, <laughs> <laughs> which makes no sense at all. I get liquid smoke, I get that. Like, I can see where you can make a mistake, but yeah. Dr. Anti Vape makes absolutely no sense at all. No, it was really a bad, really a bad mistake. All right. So let's go to Vapor, uh, Vapor Mania. Vapor Mania, um, it was really interesting because they had the shop in one correct store, right? And then, <coughs> excuse me. Well, I got to get another halls right next door. They had the event, right? And they really kind of went all out. I mean, they had they had champagne, they had yeah. hors d'oeuvres, they had a DJ. Uh, they had the um, art, the Inigan products and in kind of like a, a stand with glass. Uh, they were giving stuff away as people were coming in. Really, really well done uh, from the folks over there at Vapor Media. I, I was surprised. As you noticed, most of the shops that we went to in Greece are all very small. You know, real estate is, is pretty expensive, so it, most of the shops are small. And the right. shop at Vapor like Mania... A, like a Yaris. Most of the shops yes, yes, are yes. like a Yaris, right? Yeah, for taxation purposes. Exactly. Um, but uh, I knew that shop was small, but I think we're going to hang out, you know, outside, like most of the times that we do when we go to events like that. But literally, the, the shop next to them was unrented, so they just rented it for that one night. And I was just... I, I can't say it enough about uh, Mr. Tudas, which is the owner, and, and Costadinos uh, Petzas, my good friend that works over there. And one of the reasons that I wanted to go to that shop, uh, not only for the support of the products and, and, and the support they have shown me and you, but also they're really, really nice guys. And and so, yeah, it was just, just an amazing event, just really, really classy and very well done. We did some giveaways at the end, and uh, it was just it was it was just a lot of fun. It was a great way to kind of launch this Vape Romance tour. It, it really was. It really was. Now, what was the, the, the name of the gentleman that you interviewed? Was it Stefanos? Yes. OK, yeah. and he's the manager there? He's the manager there, yes. The yeah. manager there. So let's hear from Stefanos. Hello, my fellow vapers. This is Dimitri, the vaping Greek, behind the camera. Behind the camera, the one and only Phil Busardo. We are in Nea Ionia, suburb of Athens, and I'm here with the manager of the Vapor Mania store, Stefanos Anastasiadis. First of all, thank you so much. Such an honor to have uh, me and Phil to come, thank and, you for and come and see you. Uh, uh, before we get into the specifics of the store, as a vapor, how long have you been vaping? I've been vaping about 30 years now. Thir eight, years. eight years. Eight years. And w w what decided you wanted to get into this professionally? You wanted to do it for a living. I had a lot of weight, and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sleep. That was the reason why I changed to baby. Yeah. The first reason. After that, I just left. Yeah. It became my life. So now that you're working and actually selling these products to customers, and you know, it's a lot of smoking in Greece. Do you feel like you're getting rewarded and also helping people discover what you feel about your health? It's exactly. That's the reason why we're still doing this. Yeah. This is the reason. Seeing a smoker becoming a vapor, it's uh, the best pay in the world. Have you noticed that there are, you know, in the United States we have this problem. Some of the shops just don't care about the smokers anymore. Are you seeing the same trend here in the United States? Do you see that there are some vape shops? I think shops? that our level is in a good position. We're trying to do our the best for smokers that want to become vapors. Still, uh, in every situation, some guys still lose the... The focus, the focus. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. But we always have to understand that we need, we need new customers for our businesses. Exactly. I think 70% of the owners in uh, vaping stores agree with that. Yeah. Agree with that, totally. So, again, we're seeing just a small percentage of the stores here that are, you know, again, kind of lost track, not going back to the basics, not helping smokers. But for us, especially in our culture, because I'll tell you here, there's a lot of smoking going on in Greece. I mean, over 40% of the population smokes, so there's never going to run out of customers, right? You're never going to have. So, uh, how's business going? Is the chain expanding? It's expanding, although the, the law still uh, forces us down because of some changes and some taxes. Yes. But we're trying to do our best. Yeah. I think uh, at the end of the day, we're going to prevail. Yeah. 
what, what do you see as the trend going to be here for 2018 and 2019 in vaping? What is the demand that you're seeing from your customers? I hope it's going to be about 30-40% decrease. Yeah. In, uh, despite the, uh, the situation with the taxes and all that. Yeah. that said. What is the first thing that people tell you when you help them quit smoking and they come back after a week? What is the first type of thing that customers tell you? I sleep better. Yeah, sleep better. That's, that's the first thing they, they notice, that they sleep better and they walk better. Yeah. They walk without uh, losing their breath. Yeah. That's something that we noticed at the Smoker Show too, when we talked about the benefits, the 24-hour, 48-hour, 72-hour, one of those things that is sleeping better and, of course, not that shortness of breath. Well, where do we go from here? Are you going to open up another Vapor Mania? Yeah, sure thing. Next you one is so? going to be in another uh, suburban uh, situation in Athens. Another suburb of yeah. yes. All right, Vapor Mania GR is the website. Exactly. Vapormania.gr. Thank you so much for having me and feel such a great honor for us to be Thank here you, and the hospitality of greets is just amazing. Uh, there, there was another guy there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know his name. That's why you're here. Um, and he was vaping a pickle. Um, and, and the guy who was vaping the pickle has been begging you for a 22 millimeter Aries. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. He has been begging me for a 20. Every post that I make on Facebook, this is me, I can post that I'm out with my daughter having barbecue. Underneath, it'll say, when is the 22 millimeter Aries uh, coming out? <laughs> so, but he's been very, very happy with the atomizer. And, uh, and you know, it's all about ease of use. He's an older gentleman, and he just likes, you know, easy, 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 what it was all designed about. Yeah, yeah, I, I want RS-22 because I have four pieces of RS-24, okay. and I want to put with uh, my nice Pico. You know what I mean. So nice pickle? the pickle, the pickle, the pickle, the pickle, the pickle, okay. the pickle, the pickle. Uh -huh. You know, they leave pickle. So yeah. I just expect the 22 RS. Okay, I have four pieces of that. I have in my bag. If you want okay. to see, yes. yes. So and I want you to do me a favor. Okay. Uh, yes. You just say, uh, George. Yes, George. So George. George. I would very much like the Aries 22 millimeter. I would very like much the Aries 22 millimeters, yeah. and I would like to to be soon here in my country yeah. in Greece. And, okay. and by the way, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to get you a bigger bag. You know why? So you could have five Aries with you all the okay, time. Okay, that's, right, that's good. That's good. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay. Four Aries is <laughs> Okay. Crazy. In my bag, I have four Aries. Four. Four. So I need for my Pico one more. 22. You know. You know. You know. You know. Yeah. 22 yeah. for the Pico. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank, you. You very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So that was, uh, that was Vapor Mania. Any, any final uh, closing thoughts for Vapor Mania? No, just a great shop, great, great staff, uh, which you're going to hear a lot because everybody, everybody that we went to in their own way had a different, maybe had a little slightly different way of doing things. But yeah, it yeah. was a great time. All yeah. right. So um, next one. Uh, vape Experts, correct? Yes, Monday night we went to Vape Experts, another big shop, uh, again, in a different part of Athens, uh, in a different suburb of Athens, kind of a little bit further away from where we were before. Um, a big, big distributor there as well, too. Very, very classy shop. Just a huge selection as well, too. I mean, you, you notice from from uh, from the beginner vapor all the way to the more advanced and even high-end gear, they, they carry pr pretty much everything. And Vape Experts, again, just a great crowd. It was a little bit different. It was a little bit more quiet at Vape Experts than, than, than the show on Friday. And yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with we're post-expo uh, now. So you had you know, Saturday and Sunday, two days of expo. I think everybody was kind of burnt out. Some of the people that were there were at this show as well, too, at the expo. So it was just a little bit more quiet. But once again, just really great conversations. Um, and, and, and we, you know, again, we try, we, we, when we give out stuff, when we go to these shops and we give out Zeniths and, and Chromas, obviously it's a promotion for Inigan, but it's really nice to see somebody that's new. We had a new guy win at one there, and then we had a, we had an advanced vapor win one that immediately said, came up to us, picked up his gift and said, this is going to a smoker. And it just made me feel really good. Also, the <laughs> event, uh, Vasilis L, uh, a Greek YouTube, one of the older, uh, um, not by age, but time that he spent on YouTube, uh, YouTube reviewers in Greece, just a very, very nice guy. I've had really nice conversations with him over the past few years. Um, uh, he was there and, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we just found the opportunity to, to say a few words with him. Dimitri, I, I like it much better when you're in front of the camera. Sometimes I like it, I like it. You got your muscles out now too. I do. I got the guns out today. Mask, it's, man, it's very warm out, man. Yeah. And I'm just trying to be cool today. I'm trying to not, not be cool. Keep cool. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? Right. Gotcha. So talk to me about reviewing in, uh, in Greece. What's it like here? Less products, uh, than, Less products? uh the English uh, language, uh, channels. It's okay. It's a hobby. What is your uh, What is your YouTube channel? Vasily Sel. And uh, how long have you been reviewing? Uh, six years. Six I years? Think. Really? I, a long time. Yeah. Now, is it is it the same way here in Greece? You and uh, another Greek uh, reviewer. 
Oh yeah, he that guy. The, the reason. I know. The of course. I know. No, don't talk about him. <laughs> Please, I'm in front of the camera right now. Let's, let's keep the, the conversation on me. But seriously, so you've been, you've been reviewing for six years now. What's what's it like reviewing in Greece? Are there a lot of other reviewers in Greece? Uh, we are uh, six, seven. Six or seven? Yeah. Now, do you all fight or do you get along? No. We are a, a team except one, two who want to be celebrities. Ah, a team, a team except for one or two that want to be celebrities. See, I don't like the celebrity thing. I'm just a regular guy who likes to vape and, and help people with vaping. Now, let me ask you one more question. Very, very important question. If we wanted you to review a new product of ours, how much do you charge? Is it expensive uh, here? It's Greece? recording. Yes, it's recording. Uh, it's free of charge. It's free of charge, free of charge. I, <laughs> just, just write down the number later and we'll, we'll take care of you via PayPal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed that, but I did have my guns out for that, uh, that you show. You did. Yeah, it was a little bit embarrassing. I didn't want to tell you at the time, but uh, nobody wears that in Greece. It's just what? really, really outdated. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I even asked you if it was okay, and you said, yeah, it was fine. <laughs> I know. I didn't know if I'd be offending anybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just figured. Wait, you. And by the way, how could that be outdated and offending anybody? What is Greece's, um, what, what is the fascination with the erect penis over there? I, I, can you explain it to me? Because I don't, so I have a bottle of Uzu. Uh, Uzu. Right? Uzu. Uzu. See, and the, the guy on the bottle has an erect penis. And then yes. we go, yes. we go into the, the marketing area where, where we do a little shopping yes. and there's, there's penises everywhere yeah it's well i mean it, it stems from an ancient greek uh mythology character and this guy was always like that and he'd go around and violate women and stuff like that it's just based on a mythology so it just kind of became like a souvenir now so you can go get you can get a penis uh statue uh you can get uh, a, a, a penis uh, necklace you can get uzo with a with a <laughs> the theoretic penis and it's not just the penis it's attached to the body but if you go further down into the Agora where we were, you're going to find a bottle openers that are penises or a big statue of a penis, as we see here that you proudly uh, wanted to uh, pose next to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, by the way, looking at this photo right here, and I'm going to describe the photo because you can't see the photo. Um, which tier do you feel you fall in? Uh, I think, <laughs> which I, think which I would I, I'd have to like uh, look at it a little bit closer, but I think I'm in the second tier. Second tier. I think I'm in the second tier. Yes. Second tier. I might be my, I might be the third <laughs> yeah. row. I think definitely not any lower than that. <laughs> There's nothing left underneath that. It's so <laughs> the bottom <laughs> left of that. Oh, that went uh, south. There's something great. else that I miss uh, from Greece is uh, Athens DJ. Yes, yes, the most famous uh, radio station. They, they, you know, you this know, this is the great thing about Athens DJ. Everybody listens to it. They have like really good DJs in the morning, Monday through Friday, especially when you're going to work, and you see how traffic is in Greece, right? So you're stuck in the car for a long time. So a lot of people listen to the to the station. But one thing that you don't know about Athens DJ is. They play the same 15 songs all day. That's it. It's like the top 15 songs. They really songs do. They really do. Like, I, I, we literally, and it reminds me of like back in the day when I used to listen to radio and they just had, it was very, very repetitious. There were a couple of times where we got out of the car and there was a song playing. We get back into the car and it was the same song. I'm assuming they played different songs, you know, while we were out of the right. car. But um, yeah, and there was that one song. What's the name of that one song? Called Diddy? Solo by Clean Bandit uh, featuring Demi Lovato. Clean Solo. Bandit. And uh, Demi Lovato's in it too. Yeah, it's it's a really really good song, really and I, I sang it into the the phone, and he found it. He found it. He's like <laughs> he, he, the, the guy's amazing. He really is. So I thought, Dimitri, now you haven't seen this remix, but I, I thought I would do a little remix oh, of that God. song Here just for you. No more. I wanna f but I'm broken hearted. Quack, quack, quack. But I like to party. Ta, 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 ta. But I got nobody. Okay, now I know we're recording this live and you didn't actually see it, but I know when you see that remix, oh you will get a chuckle out of it. I don't will. know if a chuckle is that right word, but I no, you will. Yeah, I trust me, you will get a laugh uh, out of that. Okay, but 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 you know, back to vape experts to just kind of uh, shut this um, uh, this kind of segment down as well too. Um, we did have again one on one private conversations with consumers that were there with with customers and vapors that I really really enjoyed and to see. Even some of these guys that have been vaping for two, three years that might have discovered vaping through our videos, the passion that they have for it is uh, is, is it's really rewarding. And and I can't I mean, I, I, I know I'm saying it multiple times, but it's the truth is that in those events, these special moments, those five, 10 minutes that we sit there and talk to one on one on everybody are very, very precious and very appreciated. 
They really are. You know, there, there's times and, you know, that's something that we talked about doing that more often here in the States, right? Let, let's go to like what we did over at Naples Vapor. And, and this is something Dimitri and I have talked about. Let's do a vape romance tour here in the States. Let's go to those shops that focus on converting smokers. Let's go to those shops that, you know, support us and the, uh, the, uh, the, the platform products from Inikin. Uh, and we're, we're trying to figure out a way to do that. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, let us know if there's a shop that you feel that we absolutely must visit, let us know. But that is definitely something that we're working on, uh, for here in the States as well. All right. So before we move on, anything else from vape experts? No, that's it. Thanks to the team for having us. We had a great time. Absolutely. All right. So now we're going to uh, vape store. Tuesday, we took a little road trip and we drove up to Halkiva. Uh, we crossed over the famous bridge and uh, visited one of my best friends in Greece uh, that's in the industry, Apostolis, that owns uh, the vape store in Halkida. Uh Again, a very, very small shop on a very central road located in the center of town. And I have visited him in the past a few times as well. Uh, not only because, you know, he he really believes in our products. And, and <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy... I don't know how he does it. I think he has sold the most Zenith tanks in Greece, in his area, because nine out of 10 customers that came into the shop had a Zenith tank. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. When, when I mentioned before earlier in the video, when we saw nine out of 10, uh, that was the shop where we saw it at, right? Yes, yes. And, uh, and his customer base is, you know, from 18 to 80 years old. And and we did see that with a Zenith tank. There were younger uh, generation guys, vapors that were coming in using the tank, all the way up to a guy that was, I think, sixty-five years old that just just came in to have a coil, buy a coil. I mean, this yeah. this he's just vaping happy. He's not smoking, and uh, and it, it it really touches me to see those people come in and enjoy our product. So yeah, I mean, it's nice to see you know all ages come in and, and enjoy the products, and not just our products, but other products as well. You know, I think there's a there might be a little bit of a misconception out there that. Yeah, I've, I've smoked for so long that you know, the damage is already done. It's too late for me. But, you know, it, it's not too late. It's never too late. Too late. I, I, uh, older, younger, all smokers can be helped by this product and this technology. Uh, one of the guys that came in uh, was a military guy, um, works uh, in the military. He's an officer. And uh, he got turned on to vaping from another gentleman that's a customer at that store that's also in the Army as well, too. Uh, he went to the doctor and the doctor told him, you know, you need to quit smoking. It's not looking very good. You know, he couldn't, you know, go five steps without losing his breath. Uh, and uh, so he switched over to vaping and it just happened. You know, he came by to meet us. You know, he's a he's a big Zenith user as well, too. And we took this opportunity to to just record a small video. And this is something that we're going to use on the Smoker Show, obviously. But for those of you that have doubts, watch this. All right, so this is a little special video that we shot for you uh, here at the vape store at Calquida for the Smoker Show. Just kind of give you some testimonies on how vaping has helped a lot of people quit smoking and improve their lifestyle. This is Vagelis. He's actually in the Greek military here. And Vagelis, how long did you smoke for? Uh, Πόσο κάπνισες από πριν? Κάπνιζα 15 χρόνια. 15 years and uh, how much, how many cigarettes? Δυόμισι πακέτα, δυόμισι πακέτα, δύο με δυόμισι. At least a standard uh, two and a half packs of uh, cigarettes a day. A day. A day for 15 years. Ελόδο. Um, ε, και μετά πήγε στο γιατρό, έκανε σαν τεχνογραφία. Έκανα τεχνογραφία εξετάσεις, μου είπαν ότι πρέπει να το κόψω γιατί θα επιδεινωθεί η υγεία μου και ότι με αλλεργικές βροχίδιδες και είχα πρόβλημα. Το είδανε, λέει, να σταματήσει το κάπνισμα γιατί υπάρχει κίνδυνος για την υγεία σοβαρός. So here in the military, you're required every year to do an annual checkup. So you go inside and they do x-rays in your chest and they check your, your health, being as, you know, being an officer of the military. So in his last checkup, he went and the doctors actually wrote on his paperwork, you really, you need to quit smoking or you're basically going to die. So... Yeah. <laughs> Στην επόμενη εξέταση, αφού είχα κόψει με ένα φίλο που με βοήθησε πολύ, μου έδωσα να δοκιμάσω. Ε, το δοκίμασα το ηλεκτρονικό, μου άρεσε. Λέω σίγουρα θα βοηθήσει. Μου είπε ότι θα βοηθήσει. Δοκίμασέ το, δεν έχει να χάσει και κάτι. Αφού ούτω ή άλλω και αυτό είναι ένα υποκατάστατο, θα σε βοηθήσει. Ε, το δοκίμασα, μου άρεσε στην αρχή. Λέω ωραία, εντάξει, όλο το ηλεκτρονικό. Μία μέρα, δεύτερη μέρα, συνέχισα ένα μήνα χωρί άλλο τίποτα. Τρίτο μήνα. Μου άρεσε, συνέχισα, δεν έκανα ηλεκτρονικό, δεν έκανα κανονικό, συνέχισα το ηλεκτρονικό, 
Πέρασε 7 μήνε. Θα πάω το επόμενο τσεκ. Να κάνω πάλι τι εξετάσει που κάνουμε εμεί στο στρατό. Έκανα λοιπόν τι εξετάσει και μου είπανε. Δεν καπνίζει. Λέω μια... Λέ, μια χαρά γιατρέ. Όλα καλά. Λέω μια χαρά. Λέει, δεν καπνίζει. Λέει. Ε, το ηλεκτρονικό. Λέει, εντάξει, μια χαρά εξετάσει. Είναι όλα καλά. So another friend inside the army, actually is one of the customers here, told them, hey, you know, why don't you just try an e-cig that's going to help you quit smoking. Just promise me that you're not going to smoke, at least for the beginning, so you can get used to it. So he tried it, you know, one day, two days. He actually liked the, you know, the transition from smoking to vaping as well, too. Next thing you know, fast forward seven months of completely staying away from cigarettes, he goes back to do his annual and uh, it was a different doctor, which is kind of funny as well, too. Uh, they did the x-ray, and the doctor told them, you know, everything looks good. So he was a little bit surprised. So he said, hey, what do you mean? Is everything, you know, how, what does it look in my body? And the doctor said, you don't smoke? He says, uh, yeah, but I only quit, like, you know, seven months ago. The difference that I realized in my body, in my body, was better than the body, so I could have been more than the body. I had no idea of the body. Γιατί ξυπνούσα για τα παιδιά καμιά φορά νωρίτερα από ότι να πάνε στο σχολείο με το βήχα μου. Λέω, πάνε είναι νωρίς ακόμη, δεν, δεν έφτασε το πρωί να πάμε γιατί ξυπνούσα νωρίτερα για τη δουλειά. Και εκεί που πήγα να σας πούμε έκανα μια αναπνοή βαθιά με το τσιγάρο, <coughs> ενώ τώρα... So aside from the, what the doctor told him, which actually looked good as an x-ray, his own body, he suffered a lot from allergies like you feel. He would cough in the morning. His kids would wake up before it was time to go to school from his coughing. He couldn't take deep breaths. All that has gone away. So, I mean, the reason why we're shooting this to tell you is that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that E6 have you know, benefited their life and their health. But most importantly, if you look outside there, these are the two reasons why he wanted to quit smoking. So now you feel good and you're going to be around for your kids too. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, and it, like Dimitri said, that's something that you're going to see on the, uh, the Smoker Show as well. But uh, you, finally, before we leave this shop, uh, once again, this is the shop where the incident happened. This is where the, the build of death occurred. It was. Uh, and Dimitri did. And are you okay, Dimitri? I mean, is everything okay with your... With I, your I, I did lose a lot of blood. Uh, yeah. but uh, it's starting to heal up, uh, but I do have a scar on there. That's and it always remind me of my build in Khalkida. And uh, we have to add here that after after the uh, event was over with, uh, Postoli uh, kindly took us down to uh, his favorite restaurant, Seaside, and we had some amazing seafood. We did. Um, the, that was the uh, that was the the home of the giant uh, calamari, right? Uh, giant squid. I don't, don't want to. I, I, I'm like calamari. I'm trying to speak to the English audience. That would yeah. be galamad in uh, yeah. you know in for the Italians, yeah. and you call it uh, calamaraki. Yeah. Okay. Really, there you go. Really it was fried squid, guys, and it was really really good. It was fantastic. It was huge. They, they cooked the whole thing instead of just chopping it up like you're used to seeing it here. Never had it that way. As a matter of fact, when we had, I sent a photo of it to my mother. Right. And she writes back instantly, what was it stuffed with? And I'm like, no, ma, it wasn't stuffed. Are you sure it wasn't stuffed? No, ma, it, really, it wasn't stuffed. By the looks of the picture, it looks like it was stuffed. My, I'm the one who ate it. You didn't eat it, right? But she's so used to seeing the whole squid, right? It would always be stuffed in, in Italian, right? Yeah. So, and um, and, and uh, we had, uh, we had uh, a, a crab salad that was really, really good. That and was this, really this good. Fried cheese that was amazing. And... My favorite, which is a marinated small fish that's uh, like very vinegary and salty, and I just absolutely love it. It's called gavro in Greek. Uh, but as far as the calamari, no, it was not stuffed. The only thing that's stuffed, you know what's stuffed? We were after that meal. In my nose right now because you oh, gave you me only your have one nostril working. <laughs> I know, I know. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. You only have everybody look at Dimitri's. This is a new vape trick. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Spray some of that crap know, up your other one. I, I will. I will. I will. All right. So uh, that's the uh, the vape store. Any any last comments on the vape store? That's it. Uh, always a great time with Apostoli there and his crew. And uh, looking forward to seeing him next time I go down. Yep. And then we went to uh, Labia. Then we went to uh, Labia, yes. Uh, uh, La Mia is actually uh, very close to my heart because that's where a lot of my family stems from. My grandfather, my grandmother. Uh, all come from, you know, the outskirts of La Mia, which is the big center of town. And a little bit further up is Carabenisi, where my father hails from. So that whole area is very, very close to to me. I, we go a lot, obviously, when I was young. 
and uh, and I continue to visit when you know every time that I go down to Greece uh, because my we have our family plot there and my mother and my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there uh, outside Lamia. So yeah, yeah, we went to Lamia to Atmo Kipos. Atmo yeah, Kipos. Uh, and that was a, that was a very special moment. I don't know if it's something you didn't want me to talk uh, about on this video, but I don't mind. Um, is it okay? Sure. Yeah. We did uh, we did visit your mom's uh, grave. Yeah, and uh, you did bring some flowers for sure. the um, for the for the plot, and uh, it was just um, such a beautiful and such a peaceful area. You know, it's 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 really nice there. It's yeah, really I, nice th there. I think you know. I mean, for me, I, I I mean, we're so close with friends. It's something that I wanted to share with you, but also for you to kind of see that side of well, I mean, you know, death is part of life as well too, and and things are done a little bit different in Greece. You know, uh, for better or for worse. But that particular location is something that I do cherish. It's very, very quiet. It's very, very peaceful. It's in the middle of all these olive trees. And behind you, you have these huge mountains that during the wintertime are just covered with snow. And uh, it was just it was just an experience that I was I was very happy that I was able to share with you. And we paid our respects uh, before we made our visit to the garden. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you you sharing that with me and to uh, to Maria. Thank you very much for giving me one of my best friends. That's so very, that's very from my heart, pal. Very, very heartwarming and very, very touching uh, your comments. And it's not, um, by the way, it's not um, uh, labia. I, I keep it's calling not, it labia. It's, it's labia. It's, it's labia. labia, yeah. Which yeah. I think my way is more fun to say. It is. It is more fun. Yeah. Uh, but uh, George, uh, the owner, I've, uh, again, I've never met him in person. I've talked to him many times on the phone and I've talked to him on Facebook. And uh, it was a little bit uh, unique. Uh, you know, he tried to kind of warn me. He's like, you know, my shop is a little bit different than the shops that you have gone. Right, Phil? Did you, get, did you get that it, experience? Okay. So if you have a vape shop, imagine the office in the back of a vape shop. Yes. That's kind of what it felt like. Right. His desk was there. His chair was there. Um, and it was like an office, but there was all vape gear all around. Right. Very right. different. Very unique shop. Right. It kind right. of felt like a consultant's room. Yeah, not a, a doctor's like that, like, like a like a therapist room. It had a little couch inside. It had a desk. It had the chair, and then of course all the product around. George first opened that five years ago as an e shop, so he had the space already. Uh, he had the office there already. It's in a, it's in a business center, right? It's like a four story building. He's on the third floor. It has right. all kinds of other businesses inside there as well too. So he opened it basically as an e shop. So he was fulfilling his orders from there. And, you know, eventually people would call him up and says, oh, I need an atomizer. Can I come by and pick it up? So, um, you know, next thing you know, it just op opened to be an, a vape shop as well, too. And people just go and just take the elevator, go up and uh, and and buy their stuff. And, uh, and and once again, the experience here with George, a little bit more intense, I would say, than some of the other vape shops. This guy is very, very passionate about vaping. But he's also, he's kind of like us. You know, it's time to work, it's time to work, and it's time to kick back, it's time to kick back. And he was very yeah. receptive to the humor. He just immediately clicked with us, and it's that's something that you either we, click we with did. us or we, you don't. You know? And, you know, we busted his balls a little bit because he does wear one of the finest pairs of shoes that you can buy, right? I, I I don't think this was a shtick. I do truly believe that he does have ten pairs of Skechers. But he does have ten pairs but of Skechers. Once but. again, you know, he brought up the reasons. They're very very comfortable, and as you get older, you need to have comfort in your feet and stuff like that. So I get it. I get it. from a comfort perspective at that age, your age and his age. I think that yeah, Skechers is a good option. So you, so what you're saying is you only want comfortable shoes when you get older. That's correct. Correct. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if you if you have if I had to choose between style and comfort, I would choose style. Yeah, okay. that's all I'm saying. Then why do you dress the way you do? <laughs> I, mean, I don't understand. I mean, you busted my balls for my ripped jeans. I got a I new did, pair of ripped I jeans. Uh, I'm very excited. They about were very them. sexy on you. They really were. But I have to because you were busting my balls about the Yaris. So, you know, if you're going to dish it out, you got to be prepared to take it. Oh, yeah. I believe me. I've been taking it since I've known you. But yeah. uh, oh, and, and the Yaris um, ball busting is not anywhere near. No, I'm older, sure. I'm so. sure this will be dragged out for, for, for months or years to come. Maybe you need a Yaris. It's a car. And, yeah. and, and again, we had a nice turnout. People came out. We had really good discussions with the vapors that were there. And, uh, and, and again, a lot of MTL, you know, a lot of MTL. And uh, it, it was it was a fun time at the shop. But even more so, uh, after we left the shop, uh, once again, food, which is the thing in Greece, um, you got to experience the La Mia style of sheep cooking now, okay? Not lamb, sheep cooking. Sheep. 
I so, ate the whole sheep. Yeah, so we had sheep a couple of different <laughs> ways. We had the sheep shop chops. <laughs> Say that really quick, fast. Sheep chops. Um, we had sheep chops, and we also had it uh, prepared a different couple other ways, including the intestines and stuff like that, and in, in a in a subli type way, which is it was delicious. It was really really good. That that meal felt very like old school and traditional yeah. to me. Yeah. Right. Am I right? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. And, yeah, and so again, that, some of the newer generation, uh, you know, <clears throat> doesn't has not discovered yet, the, you know, with all the fast food and stuff like that, it's kind of opened up. But, you know, you can see even in that restaurant, we eat very late in Greece. So we got at the restaurant at like 930 and it was like three tables. By the time we left at 1130, it was packed <laughs> at night, 1130 at night. So yeah, having those big heavy meals at night was not uh, good for me. It was not. It's not good for anybody. But that's just the way that that people in, in Greece eat. Very very different. Very very different culture. It is Even though different. like, but I noticed too that it's it's a much more laid back, sure. conversational, not a hurried culture. It kind of reminds me of of Italy in that respect, especially yeah. when it comes to coffee. Yeah. Right. Coffee, and, coffee, coffee breaks, or they're just part of you know your DNA. You have to have them in Greece, and and you notice with me and you, we did this two or three times. We just go, sit down, just shut everything down, order a couple of Freddo cappuccinos or Freddo espressos, sit down with our vape in a nice table with a lot of people passing by, and you you kind of people watch and just talk, and it's a big stress reliever. It's something that I truly, truly miss here in the United States. Believe it or not. Um, you know, you just with just a couple of your buddies just sit down and have a cup of coffee. And uh, it's not the kind of coffee where you drink and then you refill. You just kind of have to sip it. You know, you just yeah. you, you get your glass and take a couple of uh, uh, of sips and then vape and talk and then take another couple of sips. And, and that process really distresses you. You know, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm totally hooked on that. That Fredo cappuccino. Well, soon, totally soon we that. might be able to make it here in the States. Like pretty soon. <laughs> By the way, I talked to my neighbor. Uh, yeah. And and I he actually makes a um, uh, a version of Fredo cappuccino. He makes and the frappe, he, right? The frappe. That's yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, version yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. By the way, yeah. how did, what did you think of his gift? He's very very happy, very okay. appreciative. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, it turns out that my neighbor here in Florida is Greek, <laughs> and Dimitri comes to visit, and sure enough, they start <laughs> talking Greek to each other. And he brought over a, a really nice dish the other night when you were here, actually. Right. Um, it was uh, pistachio. You no, know, close. Pasticcio. It's the Greek, yeah, ver Greek version of lasagna. Said. Yeah. That's what I said. Pistachio. And uh, it was like a, a Greek lasagna. Very, very good. Yeah, very good. tasty. It was good. So I'm happy to have a, a Greek neighbor here in yes. Florida. Um, what is the deal? What is the deal? Okay. So in Florida, we have Sun Pass. Uh, if you don't have Sun Pass, maybe you're familiar with Easy Pass. And it's that thing that sticks up on the other uh, windshield. And right. when you go through the toll, it reads it automatically and then you go. Right. Correct. Now, in, in, in New Jersey, I know there's a couple of spots where you can just kind of zip through that thing at like, you know, full speed. Right. Uh, a couple of places in Rochester, you can kind of zip through it at 20 miles an hour and it reads. What's the deal with your thing? What is the name of that thing? So this is uh, Atikio Dos uh, has an easy pass type system that um, not, there's nothing easy about it, <laughs> folks. <laughs> uh, towards the end of the trip, it was. Um, it's actually a pass that you position under your windshield. That way you can go through the tolls uh, without having to pay. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first got it, it had a little attachment that you, you know, you stick to the window and then you slide that in. Unfortunately, I didn't think very bright at the time, and I actually put it on the windshield, but that car was a rental. So when I turned in the rental, I couldn't take that thing out because it was stuck to the windshield. So I only got stuck with the actual pass itself. Now, having said that, you have to find the sweet spot. <laughs> this might be a great thing. There's no but... sweet spot for Sun Pass or Easy Pass. You just stick it <laughs> maybe, up there. Maybe the American version of but the Greek, you really have to find the spot where it actually clicks in. And yeah, I did have a little hard time the first couple of days, but but in the end, I actually found where the spot was, and then we could just breeze on through. Yeah, watch this, guys. Oh, my God. After I push, I think you buy it. What's the matter? It's like, this is Greece. We shouldn't be having this problem here. I know. This is the third time we've backed up. I know. Up. I think I had it on my... Let's see. Try it again. Oh, there you go. That'll work. Nope. Nope. No. Well, I understand stop, but that's... Oxy pass, no. Where are we going now? I'm going to go. We're going back to the airport? I'm going to go to the other lane. You are so lucky there's nobody behind you. Oh, don't worry about it. This is Greece, man. This happens all the time. Really? 
Wow, we're backing up a long way and it's old. You'll be safe, don't worry. This, you can't do this in New York or New Jersey. What happened? I don't know what happened. I gotta find where to position it so it so it beeps and right. it didn't beep. It didn't beep? Okay, and you know what though? So you did kind of find the sweet spot, but I do understand why that you don't want to uh, actually stick that up permanently in the Yaris because it'll it'll block your entire view. Oh, right, that's that's that's, um, that's that's low. Maybe you need a Yaris. It's a car. So that's <laughs> that's the uh, the Lamia store, right? And, and give that Lamia. that store's name again because that one's in Greek. Atmo Kipos uh, it translates to vape garden. Vape garden, which is right? kind of ironic because it's on the third floor of, of an office building. There's no no garden about it. No gardens <laughs> anywhere. All right. But uh, thank you, George. We had a really, really good time there. Um, now we're going to uh, Dr. Feelgood, Dr. <laughs> Anti-Vape, Dr. Anti-Smoke, Anti yes. right? That's where we're going. Yes. Another rural area. This is south, 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 southern of Greece, of, of Athens, where we are. We actually had to cross the Corinth Canal, which I thought was a really, really great experience. Uh, and I wanted you to see that, uh, where they actually cut, you know, to make passage for the ships going underneath. And uh, and we very stopped, impressive. That we, was really really impressive. And we stopped and had uh, the world famous souvlaki there, which is basically pork on a stick cooked on a grill that has not been cleaned since 1962, and hence why <laughs> it has so much good flavor. That souvlaki was amazing. Now I noticed on that um, on that canal that that bridge that walks over the canal, they actually do bungee jumping there yes. in the summertime. We should do that. We should. Now try that. that's what that was going to be my question. If they had it actually going, would you have done it? Yes, absolutely. Good. Yes, Good. I've done and bungee I, jumping before, so have, yes. Really? So I, I, so I would, I would actually attempt it. Uh, I mean, nothing in that scale. I did it up in Gatlinburg, you know, from a crane. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I would, I would absolutely try it. Yeah, I think, I think it would be. Really, and I really would cool. have fun watching you try it, and yeah. I would film the <laughs> yeah. entire thing too. I mean, there's water underneath there. I mean, if something happens, you're gonna fall in the water anyway. So I mean, oh yeah, from that high, safe. are you insane? Yeah, I mean, no. look, I'm a dolphin. Have you seen my have dolphin trick? <laughs> Have you seen the size of me? I'm not tying myself to a bunch of rubber bands and praying for uh, the best. Okay? Uh, it, it was fun. It was fun. Dr. Anti-Smoke uh, is in Corinth, downtown Corinth in the city. Uh, a very unique shop, kind of like down into a semi-basement. You literally have to like duck to get inside the door. In a, in a very tiny store, but man, one of the largest selections of product I think I have seen in Greece, period. You know, whether it's hardware or liquid. I, I couldn't make out if he was like a shop or a distribution center. He had so much gear and product there. It was it was really unbelievable. Also, um, and, and I kept asking, I'm like, is this like normal business for you? Because the number of people that were coming in, and he said, no, it's actually a little bit slow right now. I was impressed. Yes. I was really, really impressed uh, with just the, the, the number of folks walking in there. A lot of folks just looking for coils and, and liquids. A lot of folks are trying to quit smoking, too. But you're going to see, I mean, yeah, and you saw that in a lot of the Greek stores. You don't want to get a lot of that lounge, uh, you know, type of stores. People come in, buy their coils, buy their liquid, and they're gone. And they just don't want to smoke, you know. And I think maybe, maybe, just maybe stores here in the United States can take a little bit of example of that. Because I think that's why the stores there continue to get new customers because they're converting. And speaking of converting, just the highlight, the highlight of all these stores for me is, a vapor that came in that does the usual mistakes with his wife, you know, does the usual mistakes like try this, try this, quit smoking, try this, try this. And the women just become overwhelmed, came in and wanted to buy a cool fire kit as her first device to quit smoking. And, you know, we talked her through it. We gave her all the advice in the world. We told her boyfriend, I think it's her boyfriend, don't overwhelm her. Let her find the flavor that she likes. She went to the testing bar on the other side. In an MTL atomizer, got to try liquid. This is very, yeah. very important because it does not taste the same when you're subohming testing and then switching it over to a six or a 12 milligram liquid in the Zenith tank, right? Right. She got to try her liquid in an MTL. I said, find the liquid that you like first and then come on over here and we're going to take care of you. And that's exactly what we did. Not only did we take care of her, but um, I also had the opportunity uh, with you helping with the translation, teach her and show her how to use the kit and the atomizer, which was really, really cool. You know, I wish I wish that and I even said that about Naples Vapor. I wish that I had the uh, the opportunity to do that more. Right. Yeah. To actually talk to a smoker and convert them into uh, a vapor. I would imagine that for folks who work in vape shops, who work behind the counter, 
who focus in on on that type of thing that that is a very very rewarding experience seeing her face take that first puff wasn't that awesome and see the vapor come out of her mouth and just her reaction and, her, and you can tell that she's satisfied yeah. you can tell that that she likes this right and it, it's it felt really really good also i think it felt really good for her boyfriend as well too because you know it's very difficult when one of the partners in a relationship smokes and the other one vapes you know um for whatever reason it's it's just it's just an uncomfortable situation all around and it was just it was great a lot of people like i said showed up a lot of people came out to talk to us uh there was a guy there with his with his wife that had two heart attacks that switched over to vaping um and he was just just tired I mean, he had this really olive looking greek you know face and he was like really getting into it. he's like i had two heart attacks and this i'm a truck driver and and he's just so passionate about it yeah and it just yeah. it felt really really good and 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 the and the guys there um the staff you know especially pretty boy uh but even the staff there very very passionate about converting smokers and even them as experienced vapors have said coming to work at that store has kind of rekindled that passion because the owner himself uh is is so passionate about converting smokers that wraps up the uh the vape tour uh jay and kathy were there uh from Inakin to uh, attend the uh the show we kind of had wished that they they came with us to uh to some of the shops but uh they were involved in meetings and other things um and you know one of the things that i wanted to do in this video and i didn't have the opportunity because i even said that i was going to do it with you was to interview kathy yeah right so jay is a, a the sales manager now at Inakin. Mm -hmm. is that correct that's correct Okay, and Kathy is a project manager. That's great. Right? And uh, we worked very, very closely with Kathy uh, when we were in China, um, and we're we're continuing to work closely with with Kathy. She has been fantastic. Yeah. Um, and just like what a little worker bee she is. I mean, she's constantly, constantly working, constantly on the phone. As a matter of fact, Jay and Kathy visited the um, uh, the liquid uh, smoke of course, liquid puff um, shop. And Kathy was just on the phone working with China. Yes. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what that translates to what the translation there, but I think um, she was mentioning to uh, to China how much uh, sexier uh, I am uh, than Dimitri is, even even though Dimitri's lost all the weight. I think I'm she was sure. saying that Dimitri has taken me to some very good restaurants while I'm here. Could be, could be. You know, that, that's another unique thing too. You know, because when we're in China, the food is very foreign to us. But what we, what we forget is when the Chinese folks are in Greece or even America, the food is very foreign to them. Right. Right. And uh, they seem to enjoy it. Yes. Yes. We had we had the truth is we had every meal that we had was really amazing, including including the very romantic one on one that I had planned for you. Um, just sometimes folks, you know, you just want to take a break from everything. You just want to sit down and have a good meal and a good bottle of wine and, uh, and just kind of get away from this entire vape craze that's going on. So one of the nights I did plan a very romantic evening for me and Phil, and we ended up at Tony Bracados, I think is the name of it, uh, in Piraeus, overlooking the entire Micro Limano, uh, port. And and we had some just delicious, delicious uh, food and great it, wine. It was really beautiful. I was actually I was actually touched and I was uh, I was actually a little upset, too. Uh, and the reason why I was upset is because the original plan was my wife, my real wife, uh, was supposed to come on this trip with us. Right. But uh, it, it, this is a very, very difficult time of the year for my wife because all the kids are going back to school. Right. So it's hard for her to, to leave the salon. That was number one. Number two, this trip that started out as let's go to Vape Expo and then we'll turn it, turn it into a little vacation and we'll go see the islands and we'll do this. Well, that turned out to be just like a nonstop working trip. Yeah. So it, it's good that my wife didn't come, but there were there were times on the trip that I really, really wished my wife was with me. That was certainly one of the times. I mean, every time we sat down to a meal, I, I wished that my wife or even my entire family could be a part of it. But, um, you know, that wasn't the case. But th this meal that you're talking about, you know, talk about like the bromance relationship. I don't even look at a menu when I go to the, He just orders for me and he like nails it every time. I mean, you know me better than anybody, pal. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I when she said that the special was beef chicks with uh, with that um, the, uh, the pasta. 
uh, I knew, and I, and I know this restaurant has really, really good food. And, and I know you're being Italian. You'd, you'd highly uh, criticize uh, whatever you're served. But that was a specialty that day. And that's what I ordered. And I'm, I was just I ordered a plate of uh, cheeses and hams and olives. And um, we had a, 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 a salad with fresh mozzarella and tomatoes. And it was, uh, I, I think, I thought it was one of the best meals we had. It was just outstanding. It was, I mean, it was really, really good. And a little embarrassing that you have an amazing Greek, uh, an amazing Italian meal yeah. uh, when you're in Greece, but yeah. it was an amazing Italian meal. It was, it was a good was, break from all the meats and yeah. uh, and the seafood. I tried to plan it out where we'd have meat one day, seafood the other day, just kind of break it up. But it was a nice little break, and it was and the food was really good. The wine was really good. Uh, the only thing I am uh, really upset about that night is you didn't kiss me goodnight. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were tired. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He doesn't kiss her goodnight any other time either. Right. If I had kissed you goodnight, you would uh, you would have what I have even worse now. I so know, I, know. I know that you did get sick, but to be fair, uh, as soon as you started feeling under the weather, I did in the middle of the night go and find because pharmacies in Greece, unfortunately, yeah. not all of them are 24 hours like here. In the, we don't have that privilege. But right. in every uh, suburb of Athens, there's always one or two pharmacies, depending on the population, that are open 24 hours uh, a night. So I did find the pharmacy that was open for you. And I did go to the pharmacy, uh, which kind of looks uh, like a very, very weird transaction here. But you know, it, I, I want to say that it looks it looked like a drug deal, but it, really it does. was. It really does. Uh, because uh, they, uh, because it's you know it's uh, it's late at night and they're afraid somebody's going to break in or steal or you know rob rob them. So they do have the metal bars down, and you actually just talk to the pharmacist, uh, you know, in between the metal bars. And I did explain your situation to her, and she was very very compassionate, and uh, she did uh, give me a lot of medicine for you to take. And I got the whole gamut of medicine. I got you uh, cough drops. I got you cough syrup. I got you pain medicine. I got you. I mean everything, everything that you wanted. So everything was there. And I looked in the bag, and there were all those medicines. There was like a cold. Of course, I can't read anything, right? Because it's all it's all in Greek. But um, I, I saw the uh, the cough medicine was there. The cough drops were there. The cold and flu was there. You can buy antibiotics over the counter uh, in Greece. So there were some antibiotics there. There were also some questionable things in there. There was a box of condoms. Uh, there was some lube. And there was also some chloroform, which I found <laughs> a little bit odd. Um, well, but, at least uh, you didn't feel a thing. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, you should be thankful. Um, I, I do want to uh, just bring this point up i th I think it was very very important for me i i know that i worked you really really hard but i think that the reward that we got because it's one thing for me to see it you don't see it here in the states a lot simply because mtl is not very popular in the united states i saw it during the summertime and i wanted to share that experience with you and hopefully it's something we're going to share in france and some other countries in europe that we're going to visit this year but I wanted to share with you the excitement and the joy that I got during the summertime when I was visiting these stores and seeing people use our products. And and to me, uh, being able to be there with you and seeing that was very, uh, it was very, very special. And I hope you felt the same the same way, too. Absolutely felt the same way. You know, it's it's been a unique experience. It's been a crazy ride because we've had the opportunity to <clears throat> to actually work with China. <clears throat> Excuse me to work with China, to go to China, to, to work directly with them, to see the products come off the assembly line, right? To hold that box in your hand for the very first time that, that you've worked on, but then to see that, that to, to have the experience of the user walk in with that product and use that product to not smoke anymore, just, just an amazing, an amazing experience. Or, or and, put it in the hands of a smoker on the spot and see them make the conversion, um, which happened a couple of times in, in this trip. I, I, it was, it, it was again, like I said, very, very special. And I think it made it all worthwhile, even though we had to, we worked very, very hard on this trip. Even though we got sick, where you got sick there, I got sick here. It was all, it was all worth it uh, being able to experience that. I would absolutely do it again. I would absolutely do it will. again, and we will. Um, all right. I mean, I see you're, you have blown your vapors load. You're wearing the shirt for tomorrow night. Um, uh, yeah. I have mine behind me. I'm so excited. They did a really good job with those shirts. Naked, for the Naked, very, very professional, very, very classy came through and, uh, and they've given us some stuff to take up to Indiana as well, too. So. Yeah, and we're, we're talking about Naked 100, one of our new sponsors for the, the smoker show, uh, stand up a little bit, Dimitri and show that shirt. Be yeah. There you go. 
yeah. Smoker Show, and it has the Smoker Show logo on the side here. We don't smoke, and then you know uh, a little mod here with the atomizer. Very, very nice. Yeah, that that. that mod on that side with your little tattoo poking like through. That's that. that, that I got a little bit excited when you did that. <laughs> really good. I'll take a picture and send it to you later. If you, I mean, if you just had a little bit, you know, if you had a little gun show there, it might work out yeah, a little yeah, bit better. I'm lacking in that department. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I do want to thank everybody, all the business owners, the event organizers, all the vape shop managers and employees, and most of all, all the vapors that we got to interact with in Greece. I, it makes me very proud to be Greek and to know that we have that kind of hospitality uh, when when people come over to visit. And and from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank him. Absolutely. And, and and thank you for making me an honorary Greek. Uh, you guys really, really felt me, uh, made me feel welcome uh, and, and at home. And I, I can't wait to come back. I we, we, felt you, we felt you too. <laughs> What's that? We felt you too. Uh, all right. Let's wrap up with the uh, the flight back. Oh, yeah, the flight back. I, I almost forgot about the flight back. So, you know, Dimitri, once again, using his uh, airline powers there to get us upgraded, right? Well, we got one upgrade. We did not get the other upgrade. Again, you're not saying the whole story, though. So let me set the record straight. I'm okay. using my system-wide upgrades, right? Yeah. System-wide upgrades me. are expensive, right? I get so much free a year. Right. Uh, to use, I only get like four and then four if I make my status once again. So they're very precious. So yeah. system wide up. And, and you always use them yes, on me. You do. I you do. Always, I do. Yeah. So I put a request in for me and Phil. And there's 38 people that made a request. Guess who's number one and number two? Me and Phil. We're top of the list. I'm number one and Phil is number two. And there's other 36 people below there that are waiting for an upgrade. Unfortunately, there's only one seat left. Now you're going to say, Dimitri. He's so good friends with Phil. You know, you should have just sat in the back. No. <laughs> no, I mean, I love him and everything, but I did take the upgrade uh, on the way back. Uh, but, you know, we got here and that's all. I, I, you know what? You're actually you're actually quite lucky that you got the upgrade for more more reasons than one. First of all, just to set the record straight, if I had been number one and Dimitri was number two and I got the upgrade, I would have taken it too. He would have been sitting in the, in the back of the plane. No but problem. This, so we were we were going to sit next to each other back there, mm -hmm. right? And you know I like the window seat, right? You would have given me the window seat, correct? Correct. Okay. As Your I did monitor, going there, what's that? As I did going there, right? If that had happened, the monitor that was in front of you, the entertainment, the TV, and the movies and everything, yeah, would not have worked. Oh, yours wasn't working either. No, mine worked in the oh, okay. window seat, you, but it didn't you. work for the guy next to me. I got you. I got you. Yeah, great. Right? No, <laughs> first of all, luck. I didn't expect there to be a guy next me to neither. me. Me neither. He must have been standby because we had those two seats, and I went and I changed my seat, and I said, give Busardo the window seat. That right. way nobody sits next to him. He'll have a little bit more space, you know. But right. So the, um, the flight attendant comes around, and then the guy's complaining, rightfully so, that his screen doesn't work, right? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, you should ask the flight attendant if there's another seat with a screen that works. You know, that's, that's what you should do. <laughs> Pretending that I'm being all concerned about his right, well-being, right? Right, right? Actually, I just want the, the more room, okay? <laughs> so finally, the, the flight attendant comes, sir, we do have another seat for you, and the, the, the screen works. Um, would you like to take it? And he's like, yeah, sure, where is it? And she goes, it's right up here. It's a window seat. He's like, mm, I don't prefer window seats. And I'm thinking oh to myself, my what's wrong with you? Take the seat. Take <laughs> know, the seat. Right? No, no, no. He wouldn't move. Oh, he would crazy. rather sit there with that broken screen than to take a window seat with a screen that worked. Crazy. And we did get lucky. Uh, Hurricane Florence was not as b bad as, as we yeah. expected. We were expecting to spend the night in Philadelphia, but all our connections made and we're back home. And, you know, just for a few more days because we're going to be back together this weekend. But, uh, yeah, it was it was, are, a, it was a good trip. Are we? Really excited. Yes. Yes, we are. Yes. Yes, I think we will. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I might think so. I don't know. Okay. So, yeah, that wraps it up. That wraps up the Greek uh, vape bromance tour. And that also wraps up this video right here. When Dimitri and I were recording that, uh, we actually forgot to record the, the official end of the video. So just let me say... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Can I taste your juice? Is it working? Maybe you need a Yaris. It's a car.